Operation Magic Carpet. How many soldiers can fit on an aircraft carrier? Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. World War II was finally over, but the job wasn't done yet. Millions of American troops were stationed across Europe and the Pacific, itching to get home. Today, we're diving into a massive undertaking called Operation Magic Carpet, the biggest air and sea lift in history. We're talking about bringing over 8 million soldiers and sailors back to the US in just one year. That's a lot of people. But how did they pull it off? And who exactly was involved in this incredible feat? Let's buckle up and find out. The end of the war and the need for repatriation. As World War II concluded, a massive undertaking loomed bringing home over 8 million American soldiers and sailors stationed across Europe and the Pacific. This unprecedented task, dubbed Operation Magic Carpet, became the largest combined air and sea lift in history. Launched in late 1945 by the War Shipping Administration, WSA, it was a monumental effort executed in just one year, 360 days. Planning for demobilization. The United States, determined to avoid the demobilization chows after World War I, began planning well in advance. As early as 1942, a comprehensive post-war agenda was published, addressing demobilization, economic recovery and social security. A K report submitted to President Roosevelt in 1943 emphasized the importance of a swift and orderly transition for returning soldiers, aiming to reunite them with their families and reintegrate them into civilian life. Operation Magic Carpet Takes Shape By mid-1943, with the war's outcome still uncertain, planning for Operation Magic Carpet began. Given the vast number of troops scattered worldwide, over 8 million, a rapid return was a top priority for the US Army. While all branches of the military would contribute personnel and resources, the WSA, established in 1942 to manage wartime shipping, took the lead due to its authority over merchant vessels. The Players and Challenges The WSA, with its control over American ocean vessels, provided cargo ships and troop carriers, further bolstered by contributions from the Coast Guard. However, the Navy, preoccupied with the looming invasion of Japan, couldn't spare warships for European repatriation efforts. This left the initial European sea lift solely in the hands of the Army and Merchant Marines. With victory on the horizon, a public outcry arose in the United States. Home alive by 45! Millions yearned to see their soldiers home for Christmas. By May 1945, over three million American troops were stationed across Europe, Africa, and the Mediterranean. The War Shipping Administration, WSA, sprang into action, converting hundreds of cargo ships to transport soldiers back from Europe. The first ships departed in late June 1945, but the true scale of Operation Magic Carpet wouldn't take hold until Japan's surrender in September. Prior to this, troop movements averaged around 148,000 per month. After VE Day, this number skyrocketed to a staggering 435,000 returning soldiers every month. A point system determined the order of return, prioritizing those who had served the longest faced combat or had families waiting at home. Prisoners of war, often in fragile health, were among the first to be airlifted back to the US for medical care. While airlifts played a role, ships remained the primary mode of transport. The sheer volume of returning troops necessitated constant adjustments to the system. Public pressure mounted, with protests erupting in Paris, London and even Manila. By October, the Navy joined the effort in the Pacific. Warships were transformed into makeshift troop carriers and aircraft carriers, with their tiered bunks, offered the most comfortable journeys. These luxury liners boasted entertainment and better food, making them a coveted method of returning home. This rewrite condenses the original text, 
highlighting the urgency of getting troops home, the logistical challenges, and the different methods of transportation used in Operation Magic Carpet. By mid-October, the Navy threw its full weight behind Operation Magic Carpet. The newly commissioned carrier USS Lake Champlain, fitted for over 3,000 troops, joined the effort. November saw battleships like the USS Washington, hospital ships, and assault transports bolster the fleet. In Europe, the operation ballooned to over 400 vessels, ranging from converted luxury liners carrying 15,000 passengers to smaller cargo ships with basic bunks. The US even traded the iconic RMS Queen Mary for 10 smaller American vessels to expedite troop movements. The Pacific operation mirrored the European one, with a staggering 369 ships involved, a mix of assault transports, battleships, cruisers, aircraft carriers, and hospital ships. By December, the Pacific repatriation effort hit its peak, returning a staggering 700,000 troops home. Back in the US, a heartwarming display of civilian support emerged. Recognizing the yearning for a Christmas homecoming, Americans helped stranded soldiers on the West Coast reach their families. Ordinary citizens offered train tickets. Truck drivers like the one from Colorado made cross-country journeys with veterans, and Los Angeles taxi drivers delivered servicemen thousands of miles away, all out of goodwill. President Truman, addressing the nation on Christmas Eve during the national tree lighting ceremony, captured the spirit of the season. This is the Christmas that a war-weary world has prayed for. The numbers behind the feet. By September 1945, nearly 1.5 million Americans had been repatriated. Despite this massive effort, by year's end, almost 700,000 army troops and over 3 million Navy personnel remained overseas. The European phase of Operation Magic Carpet concluded by late February 1946. By April, over 3 million Americans were finally back home, reunited with their loved ones after a long and hard-fought war. Operation. Magic Carpet wasn't just about bringing soldiers home. The WSA and Army partnered to transport an estimated 500,000 foreign wives of American servicemen. The War Brides Act, passed by Congress, allowed these women to enter the US British War Bride. Alma Annan fondly recalled the delicious food aboard the ship, a stark contrast to wartime rations in England. They gave us chocolate ice cream I ate so much. The massive operation also included 48 hospital ships, bringing back nearly half a million wounded soldiers for medical care. Additionally, almost half a million German and 53,000 Italian prisoners of war were repatriated to Europe. General Marshall aptly described Operation Magic Carpet as a route rather than just demobilization. It was a massive logistical feat transporting an average of 22,222 Americans home every day for nearly a year. This mass homecoming is considered a key factor in the post-war baby boom. The story doesn't end there. In April 1946, 200,000 troops from the Asian theater returned home. Operation Magic Carpet officially concluded soon after, but repatriation efforts continued throughout 1947, bringing remaining soldiers and even the bodies of fallen heroes back to the US Operation Magic Carpet, stands as a remarkable achievement, reuniting millions with their loved ones and marking a pivotal moment in American history. All right, folks, that's all we have for Operation Magic Carpet. It wasn't just about soldiers. It was about families, healing, and closure. From war brides with a taste for chocolate ice cream to wounded heroes getting the care they deserved, this operation brought millions of lives home. And let's not forget the near half million prisoners of war who finally made it back to Europe. General Marshall called it a route, and what a route it was. An average of 22,222 Americans every single day for a year. That's some serious logistical magic. Operation Magic Carpet officially ended in 1946, but the effort to bring everyone home continued well into 1947. It was a massive undertaking, a turning point in history, 
and a testament to the human spirit's desire to be reunited. Thanks for joining me on this journey. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe for more.